Hi, good morning. We figured out, I think, sort of, the audio. Um, we're reading the Mystery of History, Volume 4. We're on page 240. So there, I don't know how many videos don't have audio. But I guess at some point we'll reread this book again, and then we'll go back and fill in the missing ones. But that won't be for a long time, so sorry. The Impressionist. In 1874, we just finished talking about women getting the right to vote and what a struggle that was. Now, Ms. Hobar says, Today you get a much-needed break from the study of war and politics. Instead of looking at yet another battlefield, we are going to study Impressionism, a popular style of painting that was became famous in the 1870s. So let's look at this um, painting right here by Claude Monet. She says, Impressionists abandoned the smooth, precise lines of the Renaissance and instead have broken, splotchy paint strokes of pure color. Natural subjects in outdoor lighting were common themes. Natural subjects. So I guess, because the windmill is not a natural subject, that's a man-made. I don't know what they mean. Maybe the grass? I don't know. Okay, so Impressionism not, does not have the smooth, precise lines of the Renaissance. It has broken, splotchy paint strokes. Okay. Four distinguished art, artists in the movement are Claude Monet, Edgar Degas, or sorry, Degas, Degas, Degas. Um, Degas. It is Degas. Ha. Huh. Pierre Auguste Renoir and Mary Cassatt. The last artists we wrote we read about were in the Renaissance, and that was all the way back in volume three. We looked at Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, and we came to find out that the Ninja Turtles were named after famous artists. And Titian and Rembrandt. Those aren't Ninja Turtles. So that's why I stopped after Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael. Who's the missing one? Michelangelo. No, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael. Donatello. Donatello. He was one, too. Um, whether you're familiar with the Renaissance or not, most people can identify the Mona Lisa. Um, can also, oh, oh by Leonardo, the, Sistine, the scenes from the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo, and the little chubby cherubs of Raphael. Titian and Rembrandt are a little harder to recognize, but they were famous for portraits. Let's see. Now, the famous... She says, I bring these to mind because the famous works of the Renaissance were hard to surpass. There were many talented artists that rose to fame after these great masters, but it was going to take a completely new style of painting to make history. So what she's saying is it was like after these masters of painting, Cal, can you move your feet a little bit and give Cruz a smidge of room? Um, you know, after the works of Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, there were other great artists, but there was nothing like, wow, oh, that's something to take note of because there had been such great artists before. She's saying what's going to have to happen is a completely new style of painting for people to be like, whoa, well, now that's different. I like that. Impressionism captures the first impression you have of something. So this is in the 1870s that we're talking about here. Do you remember when the Renaissance was? I don't remember the years. I mean, it was like 1500s something. 15 to 1600s. Yeah. Um, so the first impression that you get it comes from is where we get the word Impressionism. You, if you can picture it, in fact, I want you to stand up take a quick glance at the playground over there and see how it's a little blurry your first quick a quick glance is a little blurry 
So they abandoned the smooth lines and brushstrokes of the Renaissance and created fuzzy, vibrating images using thousands of dots and short, broken brushstrokes. Up close, if you look at the paintings, it looks like a mosaic. Nearly every splotch of paint is one pure color that is not mixed with the rest, but from far away, they blend together and merge into something beautiful with subtle images. Miss Hobar says she loves the effect of the impressionistic art because the spots of paint seem to dare her eyes to squint just a little to make sense of them. Generally speaking, the impressionists love to paint outdoors in the natural light so they could catch the sun, the play of the sun on ordinary objects like trees, flowers, boats, the shore. Uh-oh, I have a sneeze coming. <laughs> Excuse me. Nope. Okay. She says she thinks the Impressionists grew bored with the traditional portraits of the wealthy patr patrons and just the same old scenes of history because they spent their time capturing everyday life and nature. Cameras had just been invented about this time, and the new field of photography probably influenced Impressionist artists to think about creating quick snapshots of everyday the everyday life around them. And this is what they did. They used their creative um, work for an unusual angles. Okay, so let's now look at the artist. Let's first look at Claude Monet. I'm just going to see here how... Okay, it looks like we're trying to make it through Claude Monet, and that will be it because this is a quite a long lesson. We'll try to do Claude Monet now and maybe see if we can get through the rest of them um, the next time. Claude Monet, born in Paris, France in 1840. His father wished that he would take on the family grocery business. But Claude Monet, or Oscar as his family called him, that's way different than Claude, aspired to be an artist. His name is Claude, but we call him Oscar. It's probably his middle name. Claude Oscar Monet. Or maybe it's Oscar Claude. I don't know. No, it's probably Claude Oscar. Because they wouldn't. Anyway. While other artists would sit for long hours at the Louvre. Uh, copying the works of the masters. Instead, Claude found himself sitting near the windows in the museum. To paint what he saw outdoors. He learned en plein air meaning in the air, outdoor, painting. <clears throat> it was a growing trend among his peers. <coughs> Excuse me. While in Paris, Monet was influenced by the brush stroke techniques of Edouard Monet. Okay, so we have M Monet, Claude Monet. Edouard. Monet, which is different and Pierre Renoir, whom we will study later. In England, Monet spent time, Monet spent time, um, and it was influenced by the vivid colors of the landscape artists. As early as 1866, when he was just 26, he gained recognition for a painting called Camille. It's also called The Woman in the Green Dress. Camille, the woman he was painting, would later become his wife, and she had modeled for him several times. They had two children together, and now Claude Monet's style of art was growing in popularity. The quote-unquote classic art salons of the time period were not too sure about this new look coming out of Paris. The style was different from the masters of the past, and it had not had, it, they hadn't named it yet. There was no title on it. But that changed in 1874, when Monet displayed a work called Impression Sunrise. And what happened is an art critic tried to make fun of Monet's sketchy broken lines and used the title of the work to discredit it. He was tearing him down. He, in, in jest, it was like in joking hatefulness, he said the work left him with the impression 
of unfinished wallpaper because he used the word impression in his title. The truth is, rather than discredit Monet, excuse me again, the art critic gave the name Impressionism to this new style of painting. Artists started adopting the style, and from then on, they, from then on were known as Impressionists. Claude Monet remained the most loyal to Impressionism. He painted the beach, a hobby horse, poppies in the field, Camille at her embroidery. Each work was the product of hundreds of shimmering little dots that seemed to capture a snapshot of ordinary life. I would say one of the most touching of these is a painting of Camille done in 1879, um, just before she died. She died at only 32 years old, probably of tuberculosis, after, uh, shortly after her second child was born. He grie in grieving for the death of his wife, Monet painted for about a year the more dismal landscape of France, the fog and the bitter cold. But in time, he returned to the lighter themes and barely strayed from them for the rest of his life. He painted haystacks, cathedrals, gardens, and water lilies. Monet loved to paint and repaint these kinds of scenes under the changing conditions of the light. So he painted like in the morning, then midday, in the evening, on a cloudy day. Unlike the works of some painters, Monet's series of paintings gave him wealth to enjoy during his lifetime. He traveled and painted in Italy and then settled in Giverny in northern France. There he built gardens and, of course, painted them. And some of his most famous works were in Giverny. It was called Bridge Over a Pond of Water Lilies. This one we've seen before. Remember that one? Oh, that's on the... I think that's the front cover of, of a book that's about him. We also have a art book. He did suffer from cataracts, which impaired his vision and dimmed the colors that he could see. But he still enjoyed painting until he passed away in 1926. That's interesting. So he, my grandfather was 20 years old when he passed away. 19 what? 26. Wow. He was 86 years old when he passed away, and he's buried in Giverny. Thousands visit his gardens today in memory of his contribution to Impressionism, and millions of dollars have been paid for his paintings. Many Impressionists were just as famous as Monet, but all were compared to him. Monet remained a pure Impressionist painter throughout his career, and so naturally his work set the standard. So, we will look at Edward Degas, not now. Alright, that's it for now. Goodbye.